Moments with Mark, Mark chapter 11, starting with verse 15. The beginning of this chapter is what we know as Palm Sunday, when Jesus rides triumphantly into the city of Jerusalem and there declares himself as Messiah, King, the Anointed One, and Christ. And then as he's traveling with his disciples, he sees a fig tree, which represents the nation Israel. And it is fruitless, it is barren, only leaves as a show of health. And so Jesus places a curse on this fig tree because of its fruitlessness, and it becomes an object lesson of the nation of Israel. And then we come to this portion of scripture today in verse 15 and on, where Jesus cleanses the temple. Many of us have heard this story before, how Jesus chases out the money changers in the temple area. Mark 11, verse 15, Jesus clears the temple. When they arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. Now, why is Jesus clearing out the temple? Well, there's a couple reasons that the tables were set up in the temple area in the Gentile portion where the Gentiles could worship God and do their spiritual activities there in the temple area. But they couldn't have access because the tables were there and the money changers. Now the money changers and the animals and so forth that were there uh, kind of seemed like it might have been a racket. We don't know for sure or not, but it seems like they would say, uh, your money isn't good here. You need to exchange it for the proper money. And so they would charge an exorbitant amount. Same thing with the sacrifices. They might say, uh, your lamb isn't good enough to be sacrificed here. It has a spot. It has a blemish. And so they would charge an exorbitant amount for a lamb that they had that was signed, sealed, delivered, as certified for the sacrifice there at the temple. And they were keeping out the Gentiles from their worship area because that's where they had set up all the money changers, the sacrifices, and so forth. And so there are several things going on here in the story. The Gentiles being pushed aside from their worship area, and the money changers and the offerings and the sacrifices, all that is involved in this story. And Jesus comes in and he's upset at what he sees. And Jesus overturns the tables where the money changers were. So when they arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves, and he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. Verse 17, he said to them, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And his specific reference could be that you're kicking out the Gentiles, but they're welcome in the temple area as well. My temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves, probably in reference to their cheating and their exorbitant rates for money changing and offerings and sacrifices. Jesus may be saying here, the Gentiles are welcome, but your cheating of my people is not welcome in this temple area. So there was hindering of the Gentiles and there were exorbitant rates, most likely to the changing of the money and to the sacrifices. When the leading priests and teachers of religious law heard what Jesus had done, they began planning on how to kill him. But they were afraid of him because the people were so amazed at his teaching. So we already see the people plotting and conniving to somehow get rid of Jesus. He's disturbing their peace. He's hurting their bottom line. He's hurting the prophets. That evening, Jesus and his disciples left the city. The next morning, as they passed by the fig tree, remember this story of the fig tree when Jesus went by, 
there were no figs on it. It was fruitless, and so he cursed it. So they passed by the next day the fig tree that he had cursed, and the disciples noticed it had been withered from the roots up. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, Look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and died. It is prophetic of the nation Israel that they need to produce fruit, fruit that would honor God rather than cheating, conniving, and deceiving the people of the nation of Israel. So in verse 20, we see that it's the next day, most likely Tuesday of what we would call Holy Week. So we have Palm Sunday, then we have the cursing of the fig tree on Monday, then the cleansing of the temple, and then Tuesday, we have here the reference to the fig tree being withered. Verse 22, then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. In contrast, don't have faith in the nation's government. Don't have faith in your religious leaders. Place your faith, your trust, your reliance in Almighty God. Only he can come through for you. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Jesus speaks about faith and trust and reliance in God. Then he goes on and he says in verse 24, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe, if you trust, if you rely on God, that you received it, it will be yours. And of course, the caveat is that it has to be according to God's will. It has to be in Jesus' name. It has to be out of a pure motive that you're asking. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Forgiven people forgive people. If you've experienced the forgiveness and the mercy of Christ, then that should show in your relationships to others. And if others treat you ill, if others treat you bad, then you ought to offer forgiveness and grace and extend what you have received of Christ to others. And here's an interesting note. When Jesus is talking about the mountain, could he be talking about the mountain of bitterness? If you have unforgiveness in your heart, the root of bitterness will grow. And if you have a bitter heart, it becomes a great big barrier to your relationships and to your walk with Christ. Could Jesus be talking about the mountain of bitterness that it will be removed if you truly believe and if you truly forgive? Just an interesting thought there as we close out this portion of Jesus cleansing the temple and then seeing the fig tree that had been cursed how it has withered, and then his statement about faith and forgiveness there as we close out this portion of the Gospel of Mark.